Acts 16, 31. Believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. What does it mean to believe? What is it about Jesus that should be believed in? Anong katuroan niya ang dapat panaligan na nag-uugat at nagpupunta sa kaligtasan? Salvation by kindness. Lord, teach us. Preach to us. Take us by the hand. Empower us to understand your teaching. And we ask you, Father, to be our teacher, our preacher. Lead us unto greater knowledge of you. In the name of Jesus, your Son, our Lord, we pray with gratitude. Salvation by kindness. Kanya-kanyang mga itinuturo at ibinebenta, itinitindang salvation ng iba't ibang mga grupo. Pero ano ang sabi talaga ng Panginoong Jesus? Marami siyang katuroan, hindi lang isa. The truth is not always just one point. Sometimes the truth is composed of two points. And to an amateur or to a newcomer or to a new student, those two points might even seem to be contradictory. But when the Bible says two points, you have to accept both. And when there are three points, you consider all of them. Matthew 25, 31 to 32. When the Son of Man comes in His glory, Jesus speaking here, with all His angels, He will sit on His royal throne. The people of all nations will be brought before Him, and He will separate them. A shepherd separate their sheep from their goats. So ang tinutukoy dito ng Panginoong Jesus, He was talking about the royal throne where the judge sits. So the Lord refers to what people believe as judgment or even last judgment and all nations are mentioned meaning this is going to be global universal all races all tribes all peoples will face the lord and when you say all people all people are typed into only two groups and this is a dichotomy which is a typical way of jesus to teach two men two kinds of women two people, laging ganun para madaling pagpilian ng nag-aaral kung sino siya sa dalawa. So, ang gagawin daw ng Panginoon ay paghihiwalayin. Tulad ng paghihiwalay ng mga tag-aalaga ng mga hayop, yung tupa at yung mga kambing. Napakatandang katuroan na to. Alam na natin to. Kariling tayo sa Panginoon ng bago na mga pag-unawa. Matthew 25:33. He will place the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Now, hindi naman yung right side natin ay godly at yung left side ay evil. Ito ay illustration. Symbolism for favor, right. And the symbolism for disfavor, the left side. Hati dalawa. Right, left. And we should note that the reference to sheep and goats stop there. Hindi natin mamasamain yung sheep na nakikita natin sa bukid at saka yung mga goats. Ito ay illustration. Matthew 25, 34. Then the king will say to those on his right, My father has blessed you. Come and receive the kingdom that was prepared for you before the world was created. So here, Jesus refers to a group that is blessed. In the kingdom, meaning heaven, meaning salvation into paradise, was mentioned. And Jesus even says that this kingdom was prepared before the world was created. That means that this kingdom is preordained, predated, retroactive even. And that it is timeless, effective, even before the incarnation of Jesus the Word that became Jesus the Person. So the question is, why are they blessed? How are they saved? Paano nangyari? Ipinaliwanag naman ni Jesus yung favored group kung bakit sila favored. 
wala namang favoritism ang Diyos, these people earned that favor. Matthew 25, 35 to 40, sabi ni Jesus, You will be blessed, you will receive the kingdom, because when I was hungry, you gave me something to eat. When I was thirsty, you gave me something to drink. When I was a stranger, you welcomed me. When I was naked, you gave me clothes to wear. When I was sick, you took care of me. And when I was in jail, you visited me. So may common denominator, yung mga recipients of kindness na ito. Yung mga dukha, yung mga mahihirap, yung mga kawawa, yung mga puwera. Because they are the ones who are thirsty, hungry. They are the strangers in many places where they have no homes. They are naked, sick. And many are in jail, not because they are bad, but because of the injustice of the very unfair social order. So pagka daw, ginawan mo nang mabuti itong mga tao ito, sabi ni Jesus, you will inherit the kingdom of God. In other words, you will be saved. You will be saved by being kind to these types of people. And the when that Jesus mentions is all opportunities in history. Opportunities in all nations. Opportunities in all circumstances to do a Jesus. To believe in and practice Jesusness. Marami nagtatanong, Paano nung hindi pa isinisilang si Jesus? Paano naman maliligtas yung iba? Paano yung mga lugar na hindi narating ng mga misyonero? Paano naman sila kikilalanin ng Diyos? Nilinaw na ni Jesus dito. In all places, in all times, in all nations, in all circumstances, when you do good to the needy, God loves you back. Wala namang ipinrescribe dito na, oh, hali kayo, you will inherit the kingdom of God because you joined a certain religious community. Because you went through a certain religious ritual. Because you ate this and not ate this. Ang sabi, because you are good, you are kind to the needy. Walang ibinigay si Jesus na religious label. Ang nagbigay lang ng religious labels, mga religions later. Mga religions later, kanya-kanyang angkin kay Jesus, kanya-kanyang angkin kay sa Diyos, at kanya-kanyang angkin ng sarili nilang licensed and franchised way to bring you to heaven para sa kanila kayo sumali. Pero walang ganong itinuro si Jesus. Kaya dapat ang laging minabalikan, Jesus, and very basic, Jesusness. Then yung kabilang grupo, bidalinga naman ni Jesus. Verse 37, and so on. Then the ones who please the Lord will ask, When did we give you something to eat or drink? Nakakapagtaka naman bakit kami mag inherit ng kingdom of God. We never really knew you personally. When did we do that for you? When did we see you? When did we welcome you as a stranger? Or give you clothes to wear? Or visit you while you were sick or in jail? We have no remembrance of anything like that. We never saw you. We never knew you were there. So those people who are going to receive that blessing were even clueless. They were unconscious. So when they were doing those good things, they were unaffected. They were very natural. And what they did was not under any religious identity. It was not in any religious context. It was plain, day-to-day, -day, simple act of kindness. And it was not even consciously for Jesus. Because when did we do this for you? We didn't know that. But what was important, and apparently all of that was done in the spirit of Jesusness. Yes, they did not know that it was Jesus they were doing it for, but they were doing it in the spirit of Jesusness, which is the spirit of love, the spirit of kindness, which transcends places and times, races and nations and peoples. It was very universal. Then verse 40 and so on. The king will answer, Whenever you did it for any of my people, no matter how unimportant they seemed, 
you did it for me. Sabi niya, Aba, alam niyo ba, kung ginawa niya yun kahit kanino, dito sa mga taong ito na iniibig ko, at iniibig ni Jesus very specially yung mga kawawa, yung mga oppressed, yung mga weak, sabi niya, itinuturing ko yan na ginawa niyo sa akin, kahit wala ako doon personally. So apparently, what pleases God, what opens God's eternal kingdom to people, what saves into eternal life, as far as the very teaching of Jesus is concerned, is feeding the hungry, giving the drink to the thirsty, accepting strangers, clothing the naked, which all mean being kind, especially to the needy, the weak. This is high score activity as far as God is concerned. Dapat nating idiin na hanggang ngayon walang minemention ditong religious identity. Ha? This is generic act of kindness without any label of religious identity. But this reading is usually glossed over, even hidden by franchise religion and salvation. Siyempre, pag nakinig tayo sa iba't ibang religious group, ang i-emphasize nila para kayo maligtas, sali kayo sa amin. Kailangan namin kayong bautismuhan. Kailangan namin kayong gawa ng galitot ganun. Meron kayong susundin ng mga reglamentos namin. Pero hindi yun ang turo ni Jesus. Kaya napaka-importante yung balikan si Jesus. Kasi... Pagkakit na Jesus sa langit, kanya-kanyang claim na ang mga tao na sila ang tama, ang paraan nila ang tama, at sa tamang paraan nila, doon ka lang makakarating sa langit. Inangkin nila ang pintuan ng langit. Hindi ganun ang teaching ni Jesus. Matthew 25:41. Then the king will say to those on his left, Get away from me, you are under God's curse. Get into the everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. So now here, Jesus mentions the opposite. Fire, hell, judgment, punishment. All in one breath. And the important thing is that Jesus says it was prepared. Like heaven, this is preordained, predated, retroactive. This also is timeless. And why are they sent to hell? What was done and not done by them, Jesus enumerates. Matthew 25, 42 to 45. I was hungry. You did not give me anything to eat. That's why you are going to hell. I was thirsty, but you did not give me anything to drink. I was a stranger, but you did not welcome me. I was naked, but you did not give me any clothes to wear. I was sick and in jail, but you did not take care of me. Then the people, like the first group, this the second group will say, Lord, when did we fail to help you? When you were hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in jail? Hindi, hindi namin gagawin sa inyo yan. You are the Lord of Lords, you are the King of Kings. Pag nakita namin nandiyan kayo, nalaman namin nandiyan kayo, Papakainin siyempre namin kayo. Aasikasuhin namin kayo. Kailan namin kayo pinabayaan? Hindi namin magagawa yan. The king will say to them, Whenever you failed to help any of my people, no matter how unimportant they seemed, you failed to do it for me. Yung ang bait-bait mo pag nasa church ka, pag hindi ko naman mabait sa mga nasa labas, you failed to do it for me. Bakit? Yan lang nasa loob ng church ang nilikha ng Diyos. Natural. Sasabihin ni Jesus, pag akong kaharap nyo, ang babait nyo, bibigyan nyo lahat. Pero pagka mga hamak, mga dukha, mga kaya-kayanan nyo, mamaltratuhin nyo na. Ako ang minamaltrato nyo tuwing ginagawa nyo yun. Kaya huwag kayong magtaka that you're going to be sent to hell. What displeases and angers God? What closes God's eternal kingdom to some people? What brings about judgment? What sends people to hell, according to the very mouth of Jesus, not feeding the hungry, not giving drink to the thirsty, not accepting strangers, 
not clothing the naked, in other words, not being kind to the needy or the weak, not doing a Jesus when you should, not doing a Jesusness. It is really not, not joining any particular religion or sect. It is failing to be kind, to be good to the needy. So many people always ask, what is the true religion? The true religion of Jesus. Jesusness. That which teaches you to do a Jesus, to be kind, to be good. Yun ang true religion. No matter what claims people make, ang effect sa yon ng true religion, ng true Jesusness is bumabait ka. Nagiging mahabagin, matulungin, mapagmahal sa kapwa, mapagkalinga. Yun ang tunay na effect ng true spirituality. Hindi yung religious pride na ikaw ang may alam ng lahat, kayo lang ang tama, mali ang lahat. No, 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 no. Kitang kita sa teaching ni Jesus. Madaling malaman if you are in a right religious community, if you are joining a right religious community, bumabait ka. Dapat yun ang hinahanap na fruit. Because Jesus says, you will know them by their fruit. Matthew 25, 46, then Jesus said, those people will be punished forever. And punishment for unkindness to others was prepared beforehand. It is timeless. It is not just an afterthought. Matthew 25, 46, to go on, but the ones who pleased God will have eternal life. There's reward for kindness to others. It was prepared and is based on another preparation. It was really prepared beforehand. Ganun kahalaga yung kindness. Nakalaan na ako anong pupuntahan ng kind at ang pupuntahan ng unkind. At may ipinrepare pang isang bagay na may kinalaman sa kindness and goodness. Ephesians 2.10 For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Marami nagtatanong, ano po ang meaning ng life? Anong katuturan ko? Anong kahulugan ko? Ikaw ay nilikha ng Diyos. One, Ikaw ay nilikha ng Diyos para gumawa ng mabubuting bagay. Two, at ikaw ay inihanda ng Diyos para gumawa ng mabubuting bagay na matagal na niyang inilaan na assignment mo. Three, hindi ka aksidente, hindi ka meaningless, nilikha ka in a special way for a special purpose, and itinakda na kung anong gagawin mo dapat sa buhay yung nakaayon sa kung anong binigay sa iyo na giftings, strengths, talents, yun ang papel mo sa buhay. At lahat ng yan ang ending, maging mabuti sa kapwa, maging mabait sa kapwa. At inilaan na yan ng Diyos bago pa nilika ang mundo. Hindi ka pa isinisilang, alam na ng Diyos kung anong gagawin sa iyo at alam niya kung anong ipapagawa sa iyo. Kaya sabi, I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. You created me in my inmost being. When I was being created in my mother's womb, you saw my unformed body. And all the days in my life, you ordained for me. That's what the Psalms say. So lahat may say say. Everyone is created and designed for a purpose. Everyone is created and designed for specific good works as directed by their giftings. They are designed for the fulfillment of God's will and intention. Kaya ang sabi sa first, sa Ephesians 4, 11 to 16, Christ gave gifts to people. Some of them were enumerated here, but not all. He made some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some to go and tell the good news, and some to care for and teach God's people. Christ gave these gifts to prepare God's holy people for the work of serving to make the body of Christ stronger. 
in the context of the church sinasabi ng Ephesians iba-iba ang binigay ng Diyos na gift sa mga tao kaya iba-iba dapat ang papel nila hindi kayo dapat magagawa ng papel lumagay kayo sa lugar nyo kung anong gift ang binigay sa inyo at pag lahat kayo kumilos ayon sa gift na binigay sa inyo the church will be strong ganito rin sa family sa community sa bansa sa buong mundo pag lumagay ka sa lugar ginagawa mo ang tama as you were gifted by God to do the world will move forward and prosper and everybody will benefit. Lahat may purpose. Sa pamilya, ganun. Lahat ng tao may papel. Hindi isa lang ang may papel na kumita at yung iba ang papel gumastos. Kailangan lahat mayroong papel sa pagbuo ng pamilya. 1 Corinthians 12, 4-5 There are different kinds of spiritual gifts. But they are all from the same spirit. There are different ways to serve God. But we serve the same Lord. So, kanya-kanyang lugar, kanya-kanyang papel. And reward is for being faithful to one's giftedness, one's calling and purpose. Faithful ka ba sa binigay sa yung gift? Reward is for doing good to others. Reward is for giving balance to life, to the world to life. Because when you do your part, everybody will benefit and you will get your share. Reward is for true and pure spirituality, religiosity, which really means kindness. God rewards kindness. James 1.27 which is to clarify something. Religion that God our Father accepts as pure and faultless is this to look after orphans and widows in their distress, and to keep oneself from being polluted by the world. Sabi ng contemporary English version, religion that pleases God the Father must be pure and spotless. You must help needy orphans and widows, and not let this world make you evil. Very clear. Religion that God loves and approves of is not about membership. It's not about ritual. It's not about the usual standards of corporate religions. But it is being kind and being good. Sino ang mas makadiyos? Yung hindi relihiyosa, pero matulungin sa kapwa? O yung relihiyosa, pero hindi naman matulungin? Alam na natin ang sagot. Ngayon, doble-doble na kung napaka-relihiyosa mo pa, napaka-spiritual mo, tapos napaka-matulungin mo pa. How can you go wrong? Pero yung kakulangan sa kabaitan, sa kapwa at kabutihan ay hindi pwedeng pagtakpan ng relihiyon o pagiging relihiyoso. Tinitingnan ng Diyos ang puso ng tao. And of course, this meaning of Jesus can be extended in many loving ways. Because hunger and thirst, need for hospitality, is not only material, but also spiritual and emotional. Para yung sinasabi ng psychology na needs of man, basic needs, material, and then of course yung secondary needs, mga being wanted, feeling important, emotional, social, and then there's the spiritual, yung merong meaning ang yung buhay. So ganun din yung clothing and, need, and feeding and giving drink and visiting. Hindi lang physical, it can have emotional and social angles. Meaning the stranger that Jesus refers to, that you should be hospitable to, is not only, is also the strange, the outsider. Kung yung stranger in its primitive sense is may bayan kayo, tapos may outsider, nandun siya yung foreigner, siya yung outsider. Pero ganun din sa lipunan, may grupo kayo, meron kayong society, meron kayong pamilya na kakaiba siya, hindi siya kabilang, siya rin yung stranger na yun. So stranger is also the strange, the outsider. Strangers that we have to be nice to are those who are cast out and rejected because they don't belong. That the people of God, the followers of Jesus, should be kind and nice to the stigmatized, to the branded, to the demonized, to certain types of people who are marginalized, disenfranchised, disempowered, at inaapi pa nga, oppressed. 
extend the meaning of stranger to this, not only the foreigner or the tourist. Luke 7.39 The Pharisee who had invited Jesus saw this and said to himself, If this man really were a prophet, he would know what kind of woman is touching him. He would know that she's a sinner. So here is a stranger here, an outsider, a woman who is considered by the religious as a sinner. And obviously, by what the Pharisees were saying, they would never allow this woman to touch them. Magiging outsider pa rin yung woman na yon. She will never belong, she will never be welcome. But on the contrary, Jesus allows her to touch him. And Jesus in fact affirms her. Yun ang ibig sabihin ng, I was a stranger and you welcomed me. I was this woman considered sinful, but Jesus welcomes me. The Pharisees won't welcome me. So you know, at, at once a dichotomy, yung magkakaibang attitude. Matthew 9, 10 to 11. Later, Jesus and his disciples were having dinner at Matthew's house. Many tax collectors and other sinners were also there. Some Pharisees asked Jesus' disciples, Why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and other sinners? Ito na naman yung outsiders. Tax collectors, sinners, people that will never be welcome in the presence of the religious. And their question to Jesus through the disciples was, Why do you welcome these people into your presence? Why do you even fellowship and fraternize with them? Because obviously, kung sila lang ang masusunod, yung mga religious, they will never do it. They will never welcome these people. These people will remain as outsiders. At sabi ni Jesus, I was a stranger and you took me in, therefore you inherit the kingdom of God. So alam na alam natin sa turo ni Jesus, kung sino ang welcome sa heaven, yung mga suplado, mga suplada, mga masiselang religious people who will never welcome people they consider to be sinners, or those who will welcome them like Jesus does. Let us not be deceived. This is the very teaching of Jesus. And yet many people, because they think they're doing it in the name of God, they shun, they kick away, they exclude outsiders who are less holy than they think those people should be holy. Listen to the teaching of Jesus. And clothing the naked here, as Jesus says, I was naked, then you clothed me, means clothing people physically, yes. And that's what many charities do but also clothing people spiritually, emotionally, socially. Many people are so downtrodden, so judged, so maligned, that they are naked. Meaning, they not only not have clothes, but they do not have dignity. They are not respected. They are looked down upon as if they were naked. And Jesus' ness is to clothe the naked, not only with clothes, but spiritually with acceptance, with love, and with dignity. This is the kindness that Jesus expects from those who would like to be saved. Adam and Eve, when they committed the first sin, was clothed by God with skins of animals. And for them to be clothed with skins of animals, animals had to be killed. Which really means that God clothed Adam and Eve with blood to cover, to wash away their sin, which was perfected by Jesus when He shed His blood on the cross. So Jesus died to clothe the naked, to dignify those who are being oppressed because people consider them as sinful. To accept those that are being rejected by society. To give importance to people who are never given importance because they are considered to be sinful. This is what it means by Jesus. When people will be welcome in the kingdom of God. Luke 8, 1 to 2. Soon after this, Jesus was going through towns and villages telling the good news about God's kingdom. And what was that good news? Joining our church, ganun ba yon? 
doing this ritual? No. Clothing the naked with acceptance, love and dignity welcomes you to the kingdom of God. Giving rest and peace to the religiously tired and oppressed welcomes you and opens the door to the kingdom of God. Luke 8 to 12, 1 to 2, his 12 apostles were with him and so were some women who had been healed of evil spirits and all sorts of diseases. And these all sorts of diseases could cover, they were healed from sin, from guilt, from condemnation, from labels and isolation and depression. They were made new. They were turned into new persons. They had a new life and new beginning. One of them, one of the women, was Mary Magdalene, who once had seven demons in her. And those demons, when actual literal demons, are very clear to understand. But when you become metaphorical, those demons could be the demons of guilt, the demons of self-depreciation, depression, isolation, loneliness, which is the illness of people who are outcasts, who are judged, who are excluded from the mainstream by the religious people, who think that these types of people do not deserve attention and kindness. But these are the very people who are the clients of Jesus, who are the main concerns of Jesus. So Jesus saves people from sin, from the eternal punishment for sin, that is very obvious and always taught. But very important to appreciate is that Jesus saves people also from earthly punishment for sin by fellow sinners. Hindi lang naman Diyos ang nagpaparusa sa may kasalanan eh. Ang una at pinakalupit magparusa Eh, kapwa makasalanan. Kapwa tao. So Jesus saves people from earthly punishment for sin by condemnation, by affliction of others, and also by oneself. One of the most difficult condemnation is self-condemnation. At pagka guilty ka, pag kinokondition ka lagi maging guilty, inuusig, you are always made to know yourself as undeserving, mahirap mabuhay na ikaw mismo ang may dala ng ganong judgment on yourself. And Jesus sets people free from all that. Nakita natin kung paano niya tinanggap na walang patakaran ang lahat na dumarating sa kanya. At pagkatapos pagtagal-tagal, isa-isang nawawala yung mga nakatira sa kanilang mga masasamang espiritu, literally or symbolically, because the love of Jesus heals them all. But Jesus begins with us as is where is. Wala siyang requirement para lumapit ka sa Kanya. Minamahal ka agad, nililinis, tinatanggap, at dun matapos yun, unti-unti ka ngayong gumugling, gumagaling. Because God changes us from glory to glory after we have received Jesus into our hearts, into our lives. People's kindness to others gives them God's kingdom, God's reign, God's blessings. In other words, eternal life. This is from the merry mouth of Jesus. I always emphasize that because if you listen from other mouths, iba ang sasabihin nila sa inyo how to have eternal life. But per Jesus, people's unkindness to others gives them hell. It gives them timeless death. Buhay pa sila, parang patay na sila. God's kingdom is not about religious affiliation Although when you are affiliated to the very makajisus na mga faiths, eh lalo kang lumalapit sa Diyos. Pero affiliation by itself is not the point. God's kingdom is not about religious rituals and activities. It's not about religious calendars and festivals. It's not even about religious issues and doctrines. It's not about diets. It's about Jesus and Jesusness and kindness and goodness. Romans 14.17 for the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking or religious rituals, but of righteousness. And righteousness is always defined as goodness to others. So the kingdom of God is not a matter of religious diets or activities, but of righteousness, goodness to others, of peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. The kingdom of God is about kindness and goodness to others. Paulit-ulit tayo. Kasi kailangan, malinaw. 
Eh, paano po yung salvation by faith? Di ba say by faith tayo? Bakit yung by kindness na? Di ba salvation by works na yan? Hindi yun magkalaban. Because faith in Jesus means faith in the teachings of Jesus. Faith in Jesus the person and faith in Jesusness as a thought, as a lifestyle, as a habit, as a way of dealing with others. In other words, faith in Jesus means faith that leads to works, doing the works of Jesus. Hindi faith lang na wala ka namang works, fake yun. James 2.17, faith by itself, if it is not accomplished by action, is dead. So hindi magkalaban yung faith, saved by faith at saved by works. Because true faith has works. And the works of true faith is the work of Jesus. The work of Jesusness, the work of loving and caring for people. Kahit hindi pa naiimbento ang mga congregations noong unang panahon, kahit hindi sila nararating ng iba't ibang misyonaring, ang claim sila lang ang tama, when they have the Spirit of Jesus, meaning they do the work of Jesus, they love the way Jesus loves, God loves them back. And the kingdom of heaven is for them. Not branded, not franchised, but it's the universal Spirit of God which is at work in all places, at all times, among all people. So never be bad and unkind and cruel to others and to yourself. In the name of God. Kabalintunaan yan. Yung in the name of religion, in the name of God, in the name of religious correctness, cruel ka na sa iba, ang Jesus na yan. So never be bad for religious reasons. Yung iba nga, nakakalungkot kung kailan naging religyoso, doon naging malupit, doon naging mapagpwera, doon naging judgmental, doon naging self-righteous, maligtad ang effect. Dapat bumabait. When choosing between destroying your soul and that of others by hurtfully insisting on religious correctness, which is the agenda of some people, when choosing between that and being kind, even and especially to the outcast, choose to be kind because that is the choice of Jesus. Then you are on the side of Jesus, not on the side of the Pharisees. Dapat malino kung nasang kang side. By being kind, you are and you will be right. But being unkind for the sake of correctness, you will surely be wrong. Jesus had several game-changing teachings on salvation as opposed to the teachings of the temple. Jesus had several game-changing teachings on the way to God and God's kingdom. So understand Jesus' teachings on salvation by kindness. Kaninang first worship, ang aming pinag-aralan, salvation by forgiveness. Sa mga darating pa, iisa-isahin natin ang teachings ni Jesus na maraming mga points na bumubuo ng isang one big point on the meaning of salvation, on the meaning of true faith, on the meaning of way to the kingdom of God. So sabi natin, ganun lang, maging babait lang ako, welcome na ako sa heaven. Eh, may iba pa pa sinabi si Jesus, balikan mo yung kwento. Sabi niya, I was hungry, you fed me, go to heaven. I was thirsty, you gave me drink, go to heaven. I was sick. You visited me. You took care of me. Go to heaven. I was in jail. I was suffering because of injustice. You came and commiserated with me. You brought me food. You visited me. Go to heaven. I was a stranger. Puera ako. Hindi ako kasali. You welcomed me in. Go to heaven. Ano ganun lang? Hindi ganun lang yun. Kasi lahat ng kulang doon, si Jesus ang gumawa. Jesus died for us. Jesus paid with His life para padaliin sa atin yun, para masabi mo ganun lang. So, konti na lang natin ang mong gagawin. Maging mabait ka na lang. Matthew 11, 28 to 30, Come to me, all of you who are weary and burdened with all that religion, and I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, not from them, because they will only teach you to be cruel, to be unkind, and to be ultra-religious to the point of being unkind to others. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Pag sa akin kayo masusunod, di kayo, susunod, di kayo may stress. Mapagod ba kayo? Katawan lang, pero hindi yung spirit. 
hindi ko kayo laging uusigin, laging papagalitan, laging ibupwera, laging tatakutin. You will find rest for your souls. Ganun lang? Yes, ganun lang. Kasi ginawa ko na lahat eh. Ang natira na lang siya, tanggapin mo yan at magpakabait ka sa kapwa mo. Yun na lang hinahanap sa inang ama. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Sabi niya sa verse 30. So be kind. God made it easy for us to enter into eternal life. And in this particular teaching of Jesus, though there are several other teachings, the way is to be kind. Hindi mo kailangan maging morally perfect. Hindi mo kailangan mabemorya ang buong Biblia in a certain version. Hindi mo kailangan magpunta sa iba't ibang lugar para bisitahin lahat ng mga banal na dako. Maging mabait ka lang. Welcome ka na sa Diyos. Sabi niya, my yoke is easy, my burden is light. Huwag nating paguluhin na dinadagdagan ng religious identity yung salvation. Drama lang yon, alamat lang yon ng mga relihiyon na gustong sa kanila ka lang sumali para masolo ka nila. Pero as far as Jesus is concerned, maging mabuti ka sa kapwa, okay ka sa Diyos. Lord, turuan niyo po kami na i-apply ito sa aming buhay. Alam namin na hindi ganito lang yon. Ang iyong anak na si Jesus ang gumawa ng lahat ng kailangan at humarap sa lahat ng hirap para maging parang madali lang sa amin. Teach us, Lord, to appreciate the work of your son, Jesus, by doing his work by being good, by being kind to people. Right now, I challenge you, church, each one of us, bow before the Lord. Think of people you are not kind to. People you know, people in your life, people in your family, in your social circle, in your workplace, anywhere. People that you know, hindi ka mabuti sa kanila hindi ka mabait sa kanila. People na kung minsan sinasadya mo pa talagang pahirapan, perusahan, at gawa ng hindi maganda. Think. Nawa, zero. Pero himala naman kung zero. Babait naman. Pagkawa, zero. Pero kung mayroon, I want you to pray to God and seek God's forgiveness for being unkind. Kahit pa sabihin, deserve nila na hindi ka maging kind. Kahit pa sabihin, masama kasi sila. Sabi ni Lord, if you do it to the least of this, you do it to me. Hindi pinag-uusapan kung deserve nila yon. Ang pinag-uusapan, masama ka ba o mabuti sa kanila. Lalo kung sarili mong pamilya, sarili mong asawa o kapatid, sarili mong biyanan o manugang. God knows. Pray to the Lord. Surrender this to the Lord right now. Never rise from your seat, never leave this hall without making this thing clear with God. Think of those people. At sino man ngayon, ang dumating sa puntong, yes, Lord, I realize na ayaw nyo ng ganitong behavior. Ayaw nyo na unkind ako kahit kanino man. I am sorry and I want you to restore me. I want you to make that brave act to stand up. Oh, to it. And we are going to pray for God's blessing to you. That you will be able to now, from now on, be kind and be good. People of God, kung meron kayong unfair, kayo unkind, no matter how big, and you want to surrender it to the Lord now, you stand up. We're going to pray. Lord, may you work in the hearts of your people. May we not harden our hearts as in the rebellion when you speak to us. Aminin namin ang aming mga pagkukulang, lalong-lalo yung mga unkindnesses, ungoodness namin to others. Stand up to the Lord and say, Lord, I'm sorry. This is not pleasing to you. I'm going to stop being unkind and I will start being kind because this pleases you. Father, look at the hearts of the people who stand before you. May you bless each one. May you bless, restore. And Lord, I ask that you even give them extra spiritual blessing that will enable them to be dramatically, beautifully kind instead of unkind. Father, we thank you for hearing our prayer. You may sit down, people of God, and continue, everybody, to be with the Lord in silence. 
You are kind, you are good to so many people, but they are not good to you in return. Don't regret it. Don't regret being kind. Huwag niyong pagsisihan ang paggawa niyo ng mabuti kanino man. Ang ginagawang mabuti na itinatin yung laging may bunga. It doesn't always immediately show. Pero laging may bunga. What you plant, you harvest. Kung meron sa ating mga natetempt na magsisi dahil gumawa ng mabuti tapos hindi naman ginawa ng mabuti in return, huwag kayong magsisi. Continue to do good. Because when you do good, you're on the side of Jesus. And God knows. And God knows when to give you a good harvest for the good that you plant. Father, your people are assembled before your presence. Our prayer is that you will make us understand more deeply the meaning of your love. And it will translate into loving actions in our lives. Turuan niyo po kami, Lord, na maging mabuti, mabait. At kung mabuti at mabait na, maging mas mabuti at mas mabait pa sa kapwa. This is the true measure of spirituality. Pagbulay-bulayan natin, mga kapatid, ang iba pa mga practical application sa buhay natin. Ang katotohanan itinuro ni Jesus that when you are good to the needy, you receive God's favor. Lord, continue to reveal yourself as your people bow before you in silence.